Hello, international! Nice to see you! Recently, I posted a series about fancy chords on guitar. It's in my shorts. So, in my this shorts video, in my channel, of course, and not in my literal shorts. And I received a good questions about that. How do I use this chord? Any ideas for a progression in which this chord would fit well? That is a fantastic question. Once you learn one of those fancy chords, how do you use them? How do you write chord progression with those? So we're gonna I'm gonna show this to you for the chord that was asked here, which is a B6 add 11, which sounds this way. But what we're gonna do today will work for any kind of fancy chord. So let's see what is this chord, and that's what you have to do every time you have one of those fancy chords. Let's see what's in the chord. This chord is played this way. So, the bass note, it's a B note. So you want to write the notes close by so you know what they are. That's a B note. The ninth here is an F sharp. That's the fifth over the B. So, so far, it's just a power chord. Then we have this note here, which is a G sharp. This G sharp is the sixth of the chord. So again, if I write them, I have the root note, the fifth, the sixth. This eight here, it's... Uh, D sharp, and that's the major third of the chord. So it's a major chord. Then we have another B open string, okay, which is the root again. And then we have this E note open string, which is the fourth or the eleventh, depending how you want to write it. And so you see, we have essentially a major chord, root third and fifth, another root, and a sixth and an eleven. So this is typically called B. Uh, 6 and 11, though there could be other names for it. That's great! So the first thing is to see what's in your fancy chord, okay, and see what are the intervals. The second thing you need to do is to see where does this fit in a key. In a major key, where I have the first chord, the second chord, the third chord, the fourth chord, the fifth chord, the sixth, the sixth in lowercase and the seven diminish. Which one of those chords will be a major chord that supports both a sixth and a fourth? Well, there are only three major chords the one, the four, and the five, again, assuming a major key. The one will have both a sixth and a four, so that's check. That's one we want. The fourth will have. A, we support a sixth, but it will not support a fourth because it will have a sharp fourth. You can do this just by looking at the notes inside. If this would be C major, this chord would be F major, and a perfect fourth from F would be a B flat, and there is no B flat in C major. But the idea is just to see what are those intervals. So this does not work. The fifth chord will support both the fourth and the sixth, so that's check. So out of all those chords, this B6 add 11 could be the first chord of the key, or could be the fifth chord of the key if we are in major. If we are in minor, we'll have to do everything starting from this one. So if we are in minor, and that's for major, minor, the first chord is the uh, minor, the second, the second chord is diminished, the third chord is major, and so on and so forth. Do the same thing as before, and I'm thinking here natural minor, by the way, so I'm keeping the fifth minor. You have the sixth and the seventh, and of course, flat three, flat six, flat seven, and the six at eleven, the intervals of a major third, a major sixth, and a perfect fourth, will be supported only by the third chord and the flat seventh chord in a minor key. Step number two. Once you know what's in your chord, see where they fit inside a key. Okay? And then you write your chord progression accordingly. If we take this first here, then our B6 uh, uh, add 11 will be the first chord of the key. So we're in the key of B major, okay? So we could play any chord progression that fits the key of B major. I can start from this B, and then maybe play a 1 for 5, so the first chord in B major, the second chord in B major will be E. In this case I can play, I don't know, something like an E major 7. 
just to fit it. The fifth chord would be an F sharp, and I play F sharp seven. Or if I want to keep the open string, and then I can go back to my B. Six and eleven, of course. Okay, so the idea is first. I see what's in the chord and I see what position this chord can fit and then I find out the key that work around this chord, okay? And, so I, and again, in this case, I just decided this B uh, 6 at 11 is just my the first chord of my key. Now, that's not a great chord progression, honestly, it's a one for fun, but it will work. Or the B could be the fifth chord in the major scale. If B is the fifth chord in the major scale, B is the fifth, then the first is E. So I'm in the key of E major. So at that point I can play, I don't know, always one for five, but starting in E. E, then this A with the open string, then my fancy B, and back to E. So now the chord acquire a different sound, if you want, because now it's the fifth chord of the major key. Those chord progressions are okay, but they're a bit meh for two reasons. One is just a one for five, and two, they are in the major key. This stuff sounds better usually in the minor keys because we have more tension, okay? Putting the B on the th in the third position may work, but honestly, it's not my favorite. I would like to put this B in the flat seventh position. If B is my flat seventh note, then my first is C sharp. So I'm in C sharp minor in this case. And so I will start from a C sharp minor. A fancy way to play C sharp minor is to play the C sharp power chord and then leave this to first string open. So four, six, six, zero, zero. And then I can play immediately my B. And it already sounds good. I can make it even fancier, rather than playing the, the C sharp in this way, I play the ninth chord version. So I have four, six, eight, zero, zero. And then I play the B. Then I can just slide all the four my fingers down to fret to hit this A. That would be an A major with a sixth, a ninth, and a ninth, yeah, so a six nine, an A six nine. I made it back to my B. Okay, so what do you need? First, take your fancy code and analyze it and see what are the intervals inside. Second, See how those intervals fit in a key, and if your chord is the first, second, third, fourth, or whatever of the key, and if you can occupy more than one position. Third, decide which one you want to your, your chord to be among all those positions. Okay, and you can you can do this successively. You can try all the possibilities to see what comes out, and then find in what key you are by reverse engineering. If my B is the seventh of a minor key, then my key is a C sharp minor. And then just play, play any chord progression in that key, hitting your fancy chord. And boom, it will work out. It's just like that. You can do a little bit of trial and error for the other the chords and for what other um, strange things you put on the other chord and, and all, the, all those tensions and intervals, but that's really easy to do, honestly. And if you want some help in getting to know all these and learning your chords and getting to know see how, how you can go around the fretboard very easily. I have a course, it's called Complete Core Mastery, and you're gonna find on the link on the top right of the video. Just click there, read, it, read through the page, see if you like it. It will really help you understand how all those chords are all around the fretboard, and you will be able to, you'll be able to make all this kind of mental calculation at a moment's notice without even writing it down once you get familiar with that, okay? So that's how you use fancy chords in your chord progression. This is Tommaso Zillia of mysteryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy!